Hey guys, I was just on uh, Facebook and I saw somebody asking the question, how can you cut a circle into a cylinder so that you can either make a hole or an extrusion? So I thought I'd show you really quick. And if you'd like to support the channel, but more importantly, make your cycles renders massively faster, then you can get Turbo Tools version 3 from 3d-illusions.co.uk. So shift A, we'll add a cylinder. And we'll just give it 32 vertices. Rotate it on the x-axis by 90. And we'll make it a bit more interesting by adding a bevel. And then I'm going to make a duplicate of this, so Shift D. I'll rename this to original. And then we'll hide this one. Choose the original, uh, the cylinder we're working on. And we're going to side view, into edit mode, control R. I'll just add a few cuts, so about there. Make sure you've got one in the middle. And then select an even number of faces, either side of the Y line and the Z line. So I'm going to go from there, Control shift there, so we've got a square. Right click, loop tools, the add-on that comes with Blender, so enable that, and then we'll choose circle. It creates this nice circle for us, but the problem is it's made it a bit skew whiffed. Um, it's made it all flat and sticking out from the original cylinder. So this is the point where I'll go into the modifier stack, choose a shrink wrap modifier, and I'll shrink it to the original and change the wrap method to target normal project. Now if we go into edit mode, and we'll just turn on this little icon here, we can see what we've done. All right, so I'm going to press I to insert, just the very smallest amount, so we don't get any distortion. So somewhere really small, and then I'll do S to scale. So this shrink wrap modifier is making sure that that stays stuck perfectly to that to the uh, shape of the, the original cylinder. I'm going to make it quite big though originally, just so I can have a sharp transition from the uh, cylinder to the bevel if I want to. And I'll do another one. So I again, just a tiny bit, and then S. Oh, S to bring that in. So this is going to give us space for a bevel around the edge. And now I'm going to apply this shrink wrap modifier. So out of edit mode, control A, back in, and then right click. And on this one, I can choose loop tools, circle again, just to make sure it's a perfect circle. It doesn't matter if it goes flat at this point. I'm going to do E to extrude that out, SX0. I set this loop here, so number two to fridge mode. I'm going to do control B, bevel it out a little bit. I'll just add a bevel to the end as well. So number two. In fact, we'll do number three. Shift G, and we'll choose the um, coplanar. And then we'll just press F to fill that in, and then control B like that. And then we've got the perfect circle cut into the cylinder, and it's completely uh, compatible with if we do right click shade smooth and then control three or control two we can add a subdivision modifier and we're going to get a perfect result and if you don't like this sharp line at the edge you can get rid of that control x let's have a look that makes it a little bit smoother all right so uh, again obviously you can do the same if you're going inwards so what i'll do that's just number three We'll select this, and we'll go out to uh, this point here. I'll do X, and we'll delete the faces. And then number two, I'll just get rid of these. So this one, this one, this one, and this one. Control X, number two, bring this one in to about here. And then EX to bring that in. F, Control B. Now, if you do notice any problems with it, you can always use a, once you've applied this, you can always go on to here and just add a data transfer modifier. So this is if you get any problems with your reflections. I've not got any there, but if you do, uh, then you can just choose the original. And we need to get the normals from the original onto this one. 
So we're going to face corner data, enable that, and just tick custom normals. That will get the originals from here. Now, obviously, just turn this off and this one back on. We've not smoothed this one yet. So right click, shade smooth auto. Maybe give it a subdivision modifier as well. And we'll hide that one again. And then select the one above that we're working with. And then the next thing we need to do is just change the mapping method to projected face interpolated to give us a better result. And then of course we don't want it affecting the inside of this geometry. So we'll just expand this out and create a vertex group so that we can specify only the parts of the model that we want to be affected by this uh, data transfer modifier. So select all of that inside part that we don't want the normals of the cylinder to be transferred onto. And then go to the data panel and we'll choose to add a new vertex group. And we'll just call this transfer. So these are the ones that we're going to be transferring to. So in that case, we need to invert the selection and then assign it. We'll go back to the modifier and then we'll select that vertex. We'll set that vertex group. Uh, I've accidentally called it down smooth. We'll just choose that one and it will only affect the part of the object for, the, for that particular vertex group. And we're getting a perfect result. Now, it might be a little bit too perfect because the geometry itself is actually a little bit curved. So it's up to you, though. If you do want a perfect result based on the original cylinder, then you can use this method. And if you want to sharpen that edge up a little bit more, you can actually expand this um, vertex group that's controlling where, where the data gets transferred just to make it a little bit sharper by assigning the extra faces to it. And now you can see we're getting a the original cylinder's normals a little bit closer to that hole, even though the geometry itself is quite curved. So I'm actually going to make that area smaller again, and then invert the selection by pressing Control I. And then we can remove this from the vertex group to get back to the point where only the outside part is affected by that uh, modifier. I think that gives a better result. All right, so that's it. So uh, thanks for watching, and I will catch you in the next one.